Hi, welcome to MediCorea. In today's video, we are going to be talking about parturition. The word parturition simply means uh, the processes that lead to childbirth. So it's basically the process of childbearing. Uh, some people interpret the word parturition as uh, the final stage, that is basically labor and so on. But in today's video, actually, we are going to look at parturition as all the events that happen throughout pregnancy up until the time of delivery and even in the puperium. In parturition, uh, we have uh, basically four major phases that we are going to be looking at. We have phases one to four. So phase one is basically termed as the phase of uterine quiescence. Phase two is the phase of uterine activation. And phase three is the phase of uterine stimulation. And lastly, your phase four is the phase of the puperium. Throughout these phases, there are a lot of events that are going to be happening. Our major focus is going to be on two parts, uh, the cervix and then the uterus proper. Particularly, we are going to be concerned with the myometrium. So before even we proceed, I need to mention that uh, this process is tightly regulated by a lot of things, especially uh, endocrine regulation by hormones. Uh, but we shall talk about the regulation in greater detail in a, a different video altogether. But in today's video, I'm going to focus on the changes that are going to be taking place in the myometrium and in the cervix throughout these phases of uh, parturition. So let's just walk through each of them uh, one by one and bit by bit as we try to understand the kind of events that take place uh, throughout pregnancy. Let's begin with the, the phase of uterine quiescence. So as the word suggests, in, the, in this phase, the uterus and the cervix are basically going to be quiet. As, if I may term it, so it's like the body is saying, everyone be quiet, the baby needs to grow peacefully. So what's basically happening during this phase is that uh, the uterus uh, is being prepared for childbirth, likewise the cervix. But during this phase, it is very important that the uterus is not responsive to uterotonins. If this word is new to you, the word uterotonins means to all those uh, factors or chemicals that can stimulate uterine contraction. So during uterine quiescence, the myometrium is basically unresponsive to stimuli that cause contraction. So in other words, even if you uh, introduce oxytocin here, the uterus will not be able to respond or prostaglandins or whatsoever you're going to introduce. Uh, the uterus is not going to respond. How is this achieved? So there are a lot of changes that take place in the uterus that affect its ability to respond to these stimuli and as well as the ability to, to contract. One of the things that happens is that in the myocytes, uh, we have receptors for the heterotonins, receptors for oxytocin, for prostaglandins, among other heterotonins, but uh, majorly we have uh, oxytocin and, and uh, prostaglandins, but there are others like angiotensin too, uh, we have histamine as well, that has a, an implicated role here, but I don't think it's a major role. So we have these receptors ex, uh, expressed on the surfaces of the myocytes to which these uterotonins are going to bind. Now, during the phase of uterine quiescence, there is downregulation of these receptors in such a way that these receptors are few, the ones that are expressed. Therefore, even if you try to stimulate this uterus with oxytocin or a, a different uterotonin, this uterus is not going to, to respond to your uterotonin. So in other words, it's going to be refractory to contract. So that's basically about uh, unres unresponsiveness to utero tonins. The second event that happens is that uh, while our uterus is being unresponsive, even its intrinsic ability to contract is actually being reduced. How does this happen? Uh, we know that in the uterus we have uh, a, a, you know, a network of you know, smooth muscle cells you know, in some sort of meshwork something like that, and uh, we have uh, different myocytes in this meshwork. So between these cells, we are going to have uh, some sort of junctions, those are gap junctions, that enable the impulses to, tra to, to travel uh, through these myocytes such that they can all contract as a syncytium. 
Now, during the period of uterine, uh, uterine quiescence, uh, the number of gap junctions here uh, is reduced, okay? So now that we have reduced uh, production of the protein, there is a, uh, the component protein of the gap junction is called connex the connexins, but particularly the most important we are going to be focused on is connexin 43. So we have a few um, uh, gap junctions in the myometrium, and therefore uh, transmission of an impulse through this myometrium is going to be very difficult, and that uh, renders your myometrium uh, less contractile. There are several other complex uh, biochemical events that take place uh, that, that also reduce the contractility. Uh, for example, if you read further, you're going to find that the resting membrane potential in these myocytes is going to be uh, more negative. Okay, it's going to be more negative than usual, so it's going to be difficult to stimulate them and uh, to, to, to have an action potential fired. You're also going to realize that uh, you know, the, the, the contractile proteins, we have myosin and actin, okay? So, uh, usually this can exist either in globular form, in which form they're not able to, co to cause contraction and in, fib in the fibril form. So usually during the phase of uterine myosin, these, these proteins are disintegrated, so they're not in the normal structure to be able to contract. So generally, the uterus is unable to contract your uterus is unable to respond to stimuli for contraction. Let's also flip over and look at what happens in the cervix. But maybe before even we go to the cervix, of course, we need to remember that there are also other processes ongoing as, as our uterus is being unresponsive. The myometrium is becoming thicker, you know, it's becoming more vascularized and things like that, all right? So in the cervix, there are also a number of changes that take place. So actually, this is a, a phase of uterine quiescence and cervical softening. So the cervix uh, starts to get soft uh, during this phase. Why is it very important for our cervix to soften? We are trying to prepare this cervix for childbirth. We know that the cervix needs to be compliant at childbirth. So, uh, but I need us to remember that we are only softening the cervix, all right? As this cervix is becoming soft, it retains its ability to, to prevent loss of pregnancy. In, in other words, it remains co competent, all right? So our cervix is becoming soft, but still competent. So I need us to, uh, to maybe just uh, note a bit of a difference. In the rest of the uterus, mostly you find a lot of myocytes in, in, in the walls of the uterus. But then when you come down to the cervix, you find less of myocytes and you realize that the cervix is actually uh, richer in connective tissues rather than the myocytes. So it's less contractile and uh, full of connective tissue. So here we're going to be concerned mostly with our collagen, all right? So let's roll a little bit back to our biochemistry. You know that collagen uh, fibrils are made up of, uh, you know, triple helices of, of collagen, all right? So there are triple helices of collagen, another three polymers of collagen intertwined together. And these three are kind of cross-linked at different points throughout the triple helix by covalent bonds, okay? Covalent cross-linkages. So in a non-pregnant cervix, these cross-linkages are many, all right? But then what happens during pregnancy is that uh, while this collagen is being deposited, all right? fewer of these cross links are formed. So the collagen you're going to form is a bit loosely packed, all right? So these fibrils are joined together to form collagen fibers, which are loosely packed and uh, make our cervix uh, more compliant, all right? Uh, for simplicity, I think we shall leave that at that, but there is a lot more about this than that, which I believe you can go check out more. Let's uh, move on to our second phase of parturition and again look at the changes that happen in the uterus and in the in the cervix that is the phase of uterine activation all right so maybe i need to mention that uh, uterine quiescence uh, spans much of the time in pregnancy all right so it goes up to almost the last six to eight so this one spans the last six to eight weeks so all the preceding time is actually taken by the period of uterine quiescence so uh, uterine activation we are actually trying to achieve a reverse of the events that have happened to the uterus during uterine crisis. In other words, we are trying to get ready, the uterus is trying to get ready to, you know, to push this baby later on. So in other words, you have, uh, you know, your uterus becoming more responsive 
to your serotonins. In other words, this time around, we have, you know, all these receptors being expressed. There is upregulation of the receptors to both oxytocin and uh, prostaglandins. There is a differential expression of these receptors uh, throughout the different segments of the uterus, but I think we shall focus more on this maybe when we are covering the third phase in detail. Uh, but for now, just know that there is upregulation of the receptors, which makes the uterus more responsive to our uterotonins like oxytocin and the different uh, prostaglandins. I think as briefly as that. In other words, uh, we have a reverse of what is happening here. The other thing that happens is that we have increased expression or uh, synthesis of connexins, especially connexin 43. Uh, therefore, we have more and more gum junctions being formed between the myocytes and therefore uh, the impulse can easily travel through the myometrium. Basically a reverse of all the events that we talked about during uterine quiescence. And then to our cervix, unfortunately the cervix won't be taking a, a reverse direction because uh, the cervix still is continuing to prepare to, you know, to go into uh, labor, therefore it has to become even more compliant. So on top of the less cross linkages between the collagen that we've already talked about, more events are happening to make this cervix more compliant. So softening is continuing here, all right? But also there is another process which is beginning to happen, which is the ripening of the cervix. So uh, ripening, it's basically a pickup from here. We have more events that make it more compliant. On top of the collagen uh, cross links being fewer, we now have other actors coming into play. There are different molecules that also affect the packaging of these collagen fibers even more. So you must be familiar with your gags from biochemistry. This is a glycosamino glycans, all right? And then uh, ultimately we end up with the proteoglycans. These are rather made from the gags, all right? So when, uh, what happens is that we have more of this being synthesized and then they go on to interact with our already loose collagen fibrils and make them even more loosely packed and our cervix becomes even more and more compliant, all right? So around this phase, this is when you start to see, because the uterine is more responsive, you start to see what you call the Braxton Hicks contractions. Our uterus being uh, very sensitive, it, it begins to contract prematurely, sort of it's checking and asking the baby, are you ready to come out already or something like that. So usually this is the time that your mothers will start presenting to the, to the labor suit, uh, thinking they're in labor, but yet they're not. And, uh, it's just the Braxton Hicks contraction. So you need to be aware of those because not every mother that comes with uh, labor-like pains is actually in labor. So that's one of the things that can go wrong here. The other thing that can, could possibly go wrong is, uh, you know, over softening and over ripening of the cervix. It can also happen way before uh, uterine activation, that is in the state of, uh, in the state of uterine quiescence. So if you have too much of cervical softening and ripening, you could end up with cervical incompetence and then you will lose the pregnancy. This is especially observed in people with, uh, uh, you know, connective tissue disorders, talk about Marfan syndrome, etc. All right. You can go check out the different uh, connective tissue disorders and, uh, you know, see how they relate with uh, uh, cervical incompetence. So I think that's basically it about uh, the phase of uterine ac uh, activation. So let's then proceed and look at uh, the third stage, which is the stage of uterine stimulation so by the time of uterine stimulation our uterus and cervix are already uh, prepared for for delivery so the only thing left is to actually stimulate the uterus and then uh, labor starts so basically there are again uh, regulatory processes that, that uh, affect the timing of, of, of this event which I will also cover in detail in a separate video but just know there is a signal that uh, lets us know that it's time for, 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 for you know, labor to start, you know, the size, the, the, the growing size of the contents of the uterus and signals from the baby and all of that stuff. But once we get the signal that it's time to, you know, have this baby out, uh, this phase sets in. So uh, this phase of uterine stimulation actually is equal to the, the phase of actual labor, all right? So this is now where you have the con forceful contraction of the uterus that progressively become more intense and, you know, expel the products of consumption. So this stage is further subdivided into uh, different uh, stages. We have the first stage of labor, 
which is basically the, the stage of cervical dilatation so our cervix is already soft and ripe so it can now dilate and then the second stage is the stage of fetal expulsion the third one is the one of placental separation and delivery or expulsion all right uh, sometimes uh, there is a fourth stage which is rather a clinical entity rather than a real uh, you know a real entity uh, that is, uh, it's basically a phase of monitoring, okay, the first stage of labor. It's there to ensure that you monitor your mother, especially for the first 48 hours following delivery. It's very important, but uh, scientifically speaking, these are the three stages. We shall go into the details of this in a separate video when we're talking about labor and all its mechanisms and things of the sort. Let's uh, wrap this up with our last phase. That is the puparium, all right. Puperium is also known as the phase of uterine involution, but it is also cervical repair ongoing. All right. So what basically happens in this phase is that we are trying to take our uterus back to its normal state, the, to the non-pregnant state. Remember, all through these first three phases, we've made a lot of changes to the uterus. We've, we've made the cervix softer and things of the sort. So we need to take the uterus back to the initial phase or to the initial state, the non-pregnant state. And likewise, there are a lot of events uh, taking place here. But uh, I'm going to focus more uh, on, on the cervical. Uterine involution simply means your uterus is contracting and going back to its initial size. But then uh, I need us to appreciate one key thing here, uh, the role of inflammation, all right? So in the cervix, you know, we've deposited all this loose collagen and a lot of proteoglycans. Uh, and the gags and so on and we need to revert it back so the first stage is the stage of inflammation so we have our macrophages you know coming in and then uh you know they come in with a lot of tools with hammers you know to to destroy whatever has been deposited there so in others we have breakdown of all these different molecules that we've manufactured uh, d during the earlier phases and then once the inflammatory phase has you know, finished uh, removing all this, we also have a repair phase setting in where now we go back to manufacturing the normal collagen fibers and everything goes back to normal. Yes, uh, this is it uh, for our discussion on parturition. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please go down and smash that like button. And uh, in case something didn't go right, I would be very happy to receive feedback about the video. And uh, to make sure you do not miss out on future similar videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel and to turn on your notifications. Thank you and see you in the next video.